Taro Kono, Japan's digital minister, has declared war on the floppy disk. From the outside, Japan, the world's third largest economy after the United States and China, is seen as one of the most technologically sophisticated societies. Floppy disks are still used by the country's government and enterprises. So how did it all come to this? Let us check. Let's look at an overview of how floppy disks in Japan declares war on outdated technology. Japan's digital minister has declared war on floppy disks and other antiquated technology used by government officials. According to Taro Kono, around 1900 government procedures still require enterprises to use storage devices and CDs and mini disks. He stated that regulations would be modified so that individuals may use online services. Despite its reputation for cutting edge high tech gadgetry, Japan is known for its office cultures clinging to obsolete technology. Floppy disks, so called because the initial products were bendable, were invented in the late 1960s, but quickly fell out of favor due to more efficient storage methods three decades later. More than 20,000 standard disks would be required to recreate a typical memory stick storing 32 gigabytes of data. However, the square-shaped device's influence may still be seen today, as its visual design inspired the typical save icon. A Japanese government committee revealed over 1,900 instances where enterprises must employ storage mediums, such as floppy disks, when developing apps or storing data. During a press conference on Tuesday, Mr. Kono also criticized the country's continued usage of other antiquated equipment. I am looking to get rid of the fax machine, and I still intend to do so, he explained. In the context of storage devices, he inquired, where does one even get a floppy disk these days? This is not the first time Japan has made news for its archaic customs, which remain a puzzle given the country's prowess in inventing innovative new items. Moving on, more specifics on the subject. Various advanced theories include insufficient internet literacy and traditional bureaucratic culture. In 2018, the country's cybersecurity minister acknowledged that he had never used a computer, instead delegating IT responsibilities to his employees. And it wasn't until 2019 that Japan's final pager supplier ceased operations, with the last private subscriber noting that it was his elderly mother's preferred mode of contact. Officials in the United States were also discovered to be utilizing floppy disks to handle its nuclear weapons force in the 2010s, even though this practice was allegedly discontinued by the end of the decade. Following that, possible emergency text averted power outages in California. On Tuesday, an emergency SMS message helped prevent dangerous blackouts in California. The message advised homeowners to minimize their energy use for three hours to reduce the likelihood of power disruptions. The California Independent System Operator, Cal ISO, observed an immediate and significant decline in power usage following the messaging. High temperatures burden the state's power supply, prompting the alarm. When the energy supply is at capacity, CalISO issues a flex alert to remind customers to save energy. The texts are distributed in advance to enable planning. One option is to set thermostats to 25 degrees Celsius, 77 degrees Fahrenheit, and avoid using kitchen appliances such as ovens, kettles, and microwaves. People are encouraged to pre cool their houses and adjust blinds and drapes to cover windows during the alert period. According to Emma Hill, principal lecturer in energy and environmental management at Coventry University, the messaging system appears to be working. There appears to be a relationship between the quantity of SMS sent and the amount of electricity consumed, she explained. According to her, one reason for this could be that people do not want to be inconvenienced by power outages for long periods. If you have a high demand in hot temperatures and your electric output is weak, you risk harming equipment like transformers and overhead wires, which take time to repair, she said. Because of their high population and air conditioning consumption, the recommendation targeted 24 counties, including Los Angeles and the Bay Area. One California resident defended his conduct on Twitter. Well, ever heard of the Apple Watch Series 8? What do you know about it? Let's look into it. The Apple Watch Series 8 includes new capabilities such as automobile crash detection, temperature sensors for tracking ovulation cycles, and a new low power mode option. People have been wary of menstrual trackers since changes to abortion legislation in the United States, and there are fears that data regarding periods could be utilized by law enforcement. According to Apple, data on its devices would be secured and only accessible with a passcode or biometrics. We are expanding our commitment to women's health.
Health, said Apple's chief operations officer, Jeff Williams. Apple stated that a new automatic retrospective ovulation notice could assist individuals attempting to conceive. When enabled, the new watch can monitor body temperature every five seconds overnight, detecting minute changes that could indicate ovulation. Car crash detection is another new feature. The watch can detect a serious crash using sensors and automatically connect its wearer with emergency services, provide their exact location, and inform emergency contacts. The Series 8 now includes a low-power mode inspired by the iPhone and claims up to 36 hours of battery life on a full charge. The Apple Watch Series 8 starts at $399 in the United States and £419 in the United Kingdom. Moving on, Brazil prohibits the selling of iPhones without USB power adapters. Brazil has announced a restriction on selling iPhones that do not include a power adapter. Brazil's Ministry of Justice and Public Security announced Tuesday that it had fined Apple 12.275 million reais, 2.04 million pounds. Senacon, a Brazilian consumer organization, said that Apple's choice not to include power adapters with the new iPhones discriminates against customers by selling an incomplete product. Apple plans to file an appeal against the restriction. In a statement to Reuters, the business said it would cooperate with Brazilian authorities to resolve their concerns, but added that it has already won many court judgments in Brazil. We are confident that our customers are aware of the numerous charging and connectivity alternatives for their devices, Apple stated. The fine and prohibition on iPhone sales without USB power adapters were announced just one day before Apple unveiled its new iPhone 14, 14 Pro, and Apple Watch Ultra. Sao Paulo's Consumer Protection Agency penalized Apple £2 million last year, claiming that the sale of the iPhone 12 and subsequent models violated consumer legislation because they did not come with chargers. Following that, Apple's power adapters pulling the plug. With the iPhone 12 in 2020, Apple will no longer provide power adapters and headphones in iPhone packaging. It's said that the decision after Apple first removed power adapters from new Apple Watch boxes will help cut Apple's carbon impact by shrinking packing. Sometimes it's not what we make, but what we don't make. Lisa Jackson, Apple's Vice President of Environment, Policy, and Social Initiatives said at the company's 2020 September keynote. She said there were currently more than 2 billion official Apple power adapters in use worldwide. Senecon filed a complaint against the move last year and said Apple's explanations for removing USB power adapters from iPhone boxes were insufficient. It stated that there's no proof eliminating fees improved the environment. Senecon, according to Brazil's Justice Ministry, could have investigated alternatives to minimize its environmental impact that would not create a cost on consumers, such as adopting USB-C connections and chargers to reduce e-waste. Earlier this year, the European Union provisionally agreed on plans to impose a single USB-C charging cable for portable electronic gadgets. Finally, the Microsoft Activision merger may reduce competition, according to a UK monitor. Microsoft wants to pay $68.7 billion, 59.2 billion pounds, for the maker of Overwatch, Candy Crush, and Call of Duty. However, the UK's Competition and Markets Authority, CMA, has stated that its concerns need an in-depth investigation. Microsoft stated that it was willing to collaborate with the CMA on the next steps. If the purchase goes through, it will be Microsoft's largest acquisition. Activision Blizzard's games are among the most popular in the world. However, it has already been accused of allowing a toxic and sexist workplace culture. The CMA stated in its judgment that it was concerned that if Microsoft purchased Activision Blizzard, it would harm competitors, either refusing them access to Activision Blizzard games or granting access on considerably worse terms. Sorcha O'Carroll, senior director of mergers at the CMA, said Microsoft might use its influence over popular games like Call of Duty and World of Warcraft post-merger to undermine rivals. If our current concerns are not addressed, we intend to conduct an in-depth Phase 2 inquiry into this transaction to make a judgment that is in the best interests of UK gamers and businesses. This judgment brings the CMA's initial inquiry, known as Phase 1, to a close. In Phase 2, the CMA selects an independent panel to conduct a more thorough investigation of the transaction. If the CMA determines that a merger is problematic, it will take efforts to mitigate its negative impacts. This could mean halting the merger or allowing it to proceed only under particular circumstances. Well, that marks the end of our video for today. We hope you enjoyed it. On your way out, make sure to hit that
that subscribe button for more content like this in the future. Thanks for watching.